Ever since I was a little kid, I'd go out with my wolf into the potter. And I would make a cross country ski track. And I'd ski over and over it until it got really well worn, almost like this. Almost like those manufactured tracks. And today when I first got here, the track looked like this. It was all fresh corduroy. Now it looks like this. Every one of those tracks were made by me. My own effort, my own sacred sweat. And when it comes to race day, when it comes to challenging times in life, I think back how I love making untracked terrain tracked. I think that's why I created Holistic Fitness. You know, there wasn't much out there in 1981. It was like that powder bank right there when it came to personal growth through fitness. And I saw a niche and I created Holistic Fitness. And uh, in the same way I love to this day, just turning first tracks or no tracks into a well-trodden path for others. Yeah, it's just kind of a little metaphorical little vent, rumination, pondering, yes, anyway, have a great day, <laughs> oh man, I'm weird. And this is Hillcrest. This is our public golf course, and there is a ski track here now. You know, uh, when I was a kid growing up here, we used to ski up here all the time, and I got so sick of it. And I'm like, man, when I get to be a grown up, I'm never gonna ski here. Well, let me tell you, let's see, past several years of being a, a daddy here, uh, yeah, this thing, when this track is in, it makes the logistics so much easier and the carbon footprint so much less on our beautiful Father Sky and Mother Earth. We have a 5K race coming up this weekend in Pagosa on Saturday. Daywell's going to be racing with the team doing freestyle skate. I'm going to go into the classic. We're going to use that uh, race as an opener for our big redemption race, the Purgatory Rando. I'll click to hear that link. It's, don't miss that one. <laughs> day, one, day one in particular is still a little salty. Uh, how we blew a uh, uh, big lead uh, going into the downhill section of the race. And uh, yeah, so anyway, hopefully big redemption. But today I'm going to have the backcountry skis. I'm going to go up there. I'm going to ski, skin up there, and then I hope to come down here. This is just, you know, like, I don't know, 30 minutes away from my home. Um, the avalanche danger is very, very high um, in the high country here. So this is a very safe line. I haven't skied this line for, like, decades. So it's going to be fun to check it out. You know, here's the thing. Here's a coach rant. You hear a lot about backcountry skiing and like it's hilarious like on social media there'll be these yeah you know, kids will be like ski the heck of a backcountry line today Woo! you know what there's vi i was a professional mountaineer for 15 years and i hate to tell you there's it, 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 true backcountry is really hard to find you really have to work these days to find backcountry lines so most of you know, what's going on in this explosion of kind of ski mountaineering stuff is really side country stuff. Like, right here. You know, like, there's the highway, and there's where I'm going to ski up. And I'm going to ski down. It's right next to the highway. So, 
most of when you hear backcountry stuff and outside magazines always about backcountry this and that. Um, no, it's mostly side country. Now, that's not to say um, that you should downplay avalanche danger at all. Um, just a couple years ago, just outside the Iron Matterhorn Nordic Ski Area, next to the highway uh, just south of Telluride, you know, a dude was right up in these type of woods, and um, a little mini slide got him, buried him, and he died. So, you know, I'm not saying, uh, yeah, let your guard down on side country stuff, but a lot of people do. There's a false sense of security when you can see a highway like right there. From Sam, and he was a formal uh, student. He was really enjoying all the race vlogs, and he was like, you know, getting back into racing and stuff. And he's like, how? What's the best way to deal with pre-race like butterflies and stuff? Uh, solid question. Um, and you'd think, you know, uh, at my age, I, I, I would overcome butterflies before I tow a start line. No, I get as nervous before a race uh, as does Daywa at age 14. Um, so really, the years of experience that you have, hopefully, doesn't decrease those butterflies. Those butterflies are a manifestation of very blessed incarnation. I mean, really, if you have the abundance to have the gear and have the time to train and to do what it takes to get to a start line that's a that's a big medicine blessing you're living life large there are so many millions of people that are just trying to like get a meal and just suffering to get a higher education and doing whatever it takes you know this the butterflies are like a blessing of an incarnation uh, so start from there understand that Wow, if you're feeling butterflies, dude, that's a solid, solid medicine blessing. Um, a way to deal with them, of course, um, is to recognize that they're good. That means you're hungry. That means that your, you know, your, your, uh, um, physiology, um, everything is like ramped up and ready to go. It's a good sign. Uh, you do need a coping mechanism to deal with butterflies and in holistic fitness, of course, we use mantra japa. Um, so if you've been graced through, uh, our tribal mantra, Om Mani Padme Om, um, you know, you, you learn techniques if you're a student, you know, to deal with, to deal with, uh, nervousness. And I just want to say, you know, cause I've performed, uh, competed in front of uh, several thousand people. I've competed on national TV. And I've competed right up here at the Nordic Center in the local Coke series. And I hate to tell you, I'll get butterflies regardless of the size of the stage. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm very inwardly motivated. Uh, Dewa is. You're probably inwardly motivated if you're enjoying these vlogs. Um, so the pressure can come from the outer world, i.e. have a, doing rock climbing moves in front of a national TV camera right there. Or it, you know, you don't want to make a fool of yourself. Uh, or it could be right up here, racing against my peers. I love, you know, to me, having the respect of my peers is really important. Um, it's a testimony to my character. You know, am I being helpful to the community? I don't want to, like, you know, grow old and stumble around the track and be an idiot. I, of course, I want to go down fighting. I want to show my peers that, yeah, I'm still, I'm still with you, bro. So, um, you know, I, yeah, it's funny. So understand that the size of the stage doesn't matter. Um, the coping mechanism remains the same. You know, you must learn a technique, a ritual, um, practices before the race. Um, you know, butterflies can start a day before the race, evening. Of the you know, the big thing is like when you're staging, doing your warm up, and then you're in the start gate or in the start field. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, so, yeah, mantra, do anything it takes to, one, appreciate the fact that butterflies mean, you know, you're ready, um, and then keep breathing, mantra, mind clear, and then because have faith that the moment, especially in these, the true sports, uh, i.e. endurance sports, sports that really like have, you know, maximum uh, mental focus involved, within the first minute, 
Certainly three minutes. You're going to be suffering like a three-legged dog saying, you know, the breath is going to be everywhere, heart rate. You, then you start thinking tactically. Um, and the butterflies, their nature is to fly, right? A butterfly's nature is to fly. They like to flutter around. So the moment that start, start gun goes off, you're thinking tactically. The breath is high. Heart rate is high. The butterflies will take flight. And you're just, yeah, gone. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's just a uh, proven path of... Decades. So, uh, yeah, let's go ski, shall we? First tracks here at Durango Nordic Center. It's interval. I'm going to start like right down there. And then I'm going to finish the interval. Four minutes up there. All uphill. You can. This will be the last intensity workout uh, before the race week. The only uh, bum thing is I wore the wrong colored glasses. But that's a me problem.
Wow. Have you guys ever had the, <clears throat> the sensation that you just kind of wish your interval day was your race day? Today was one of those eight by four minutes with four minute recovery. And even though I was hitting tickling 170 heart rate during the interval, within four minutes, my heart rate was back down to eight. My race age is 60, but those numbers are in my 20s. So really stoked, felt strong, um, good signs everywhere. One technique that I teach my students <clears throat> that's pivotal for uh, if you're on your interval day or you're racing and you need to lower your heart rate, I teach what's called a compression breath. This is a huge, like a double nostril uh, inhale. <sighs> You flare your, your nostrils and you're just, you, you just try to dilate the nostrils as big as you can. A huge nasal inhale. And then a mouth exhale with pursed lips. And you repeat that three, five, six times. Even on a, like a downhill over my right shoulder. If I can sneak in, you know, three to six of those, uh, compression breaths, um, my heart rate will significantly lower, get me ready for the next interval. Or like if I was going up that hill, um, it would really uh, help uh, help in that uh, matter. So once again, uh, holistic fitness technique, it's kind of based on the high performance yoga, my high performance yoga breathing techniques. It's called the compression breath. It's done while you're competing, while you're working out hard intervals. Um, double nasal inhale. Personal lips, big mouth exhale. <sighs> no timidity, just just bring in the prana, expel the toxins. Got it? You heard it here. All right, now I'm on.